All right. I've got my I've got my safety neighbor over here, <laughs> and I want to do a quick a quick little video because I know it's winter time, and people are getting their heaters out. And uh, I've I had an issue with this heater, and the issue was I plugged it in, look it's a Duraflame, and then half hour later I went and felt this plug, and it was hot. This cord was hot and I unplugged it and this was malleable. This whole plug was malleable. And I'm showing this to my safety neighbor. Dennis <laughs> is a safety guy, instructor. And what is the first thing people should look for when they buy one of these, Dennis? Is it UL approved and double insulated? Double insulated. If it's a two prong cord. But to me, that just looks chintzy. Yeah, it, 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 it is. Like it should have three I found this at one of my properties. I'd never used it before, but I didn't think to look for that. It's not on there. And it's, and it's a Chinese made, made in China. Well, everything's made. Everything. That's... Best thing you can do with this is throw it in the dump. Yeah. <laughs> I, was really? tell, I was telling Dennis I'm going to open it up and see if I can't change the cord. I it. love my neighbor. I don't want you to kill her, okay? <laughs> throw yeah. the damn thing away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when, you, when you're running your heater for the first time, watch it. And yeah. don't and don't walk away from it, right, Dennis? Exactly. It's the Never. same thing with Christmas tree lights. Unplug you know, them. Unplug them. And don't don't run them when you're gone because these the, those cords, mm -hmm. those those lights are not designed to, to carry any kind of heat. Yeah. And they, you know, if you have it overloaded, it will carry heat. How and about those little, you know, the little tiny Christmas lights? Same thing? I'm not sure about that, but it's still, they're designed for so many amps. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you've got a lot plugged in, it could overload it. And I've got a video, I'll try to find and send you, how quick a, a room will go up if a Christmas tree can just fire. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. under two minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And this, and this is the- We used to burn the Christmas trees, our well, Christmas trees at the end of the season. Oh yeah, and they explode. Yeah, it's like yeah. Sap, nothing but dry wood and sap. Yeah. Fuel yeah. and kindling. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Great. This is the time of year when so many fires occur, right? Yeah. Because of because yeah. of all of but this stuff. Could, and you may could replace this if it's, if it's sturdy enough wire on the inside. You yeah. Have to look at it. I'll open it up and see what the yeah. terminals look like for this. Yeah. If it's if it's sturdy. I'll replace it because it's a nice little heater and it cranks out some heat. Yeah. Now I've got one like this and we used it all the time, but it's a heavier gauge cord. Yeah. And it's three pronged. Yeah. I have a little one in the bathroom that I use. Yeah. Jen said this is too big anyway, so yeah. it'll be something for the, the man cave or something like that. Okay. Okay. So just to satisfy my curiosity, I open this up in the back. It's upside down right now. I took the back panel off and uh, I learned something. I didn't know how they achieved this uh, illusion of fire. You see there's a light bulb there. Not to exceed 40 watts, it says, uh, to avoid risk of fire. Well, gee, why didn't they put a, the proper size cord on there, the proper gauge? Uh, but look at that. So the light shines and hits those uh, strips of aluminum as they rotate on this little rotisserie and then that goes through that uh, screen and appears to be flickering flame on this side I guess that's pretty cool and so that wasn't where I would find access to the wire see the wire goes through there all the way up front and what I found I took some screws off right here there are about six, six or eight screws all the way around this thing. You see all the little screw holes? This is the heater. Right here. Uh, yeah, that's just not... I'm not convinced that I would be able to put a bigger gauge. Yeah, so into the trash this goes, for sure. Just not going to cut it. All right, so now we know. And look, found the amperage, 12.5. And so I went and looked it up, and this should be a 14 
gauge, like a 12 or a 14 gauge for that for that amperage. Uh, and this is, I found it on here, it's 16 gauge. Here you go, this is an example. This extension cord is 16 gauge, it's a two wire cord. And as a reminder, you don't ever wanna use a, a lightweight uh, household cord like this for something that draws a lot of amps. It's just, it's just very dangerous. All right. Well, thank you, Dennis. Absolutely. Thank Th you. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be safe. Now, you know me. Here's a barbecue I bought a couple of seasons ago. This is rusted through. This is the tray on which the embers fall, and you, it's your clean-out tray. You just pick it up and dump all the ashes. But it's, uh, you know, they don't, they don't put anything nice in these things because they're cheap units. So that's just a piece of cheap steel. But look at this, the back of that heater is the same dimension. Look at that. So I take this out. I got myself a, a new ashtray. How do you like that? That, my friends, is perfect repurposing. Love it.